Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining in. Um, if you have your notes in front of you, um, I'm going to be taking you through your chapter 25 notes, which is on properties of stars and um, all the different ways we categorize stars and compare them to each other. So um, when comparing uh, distances in stars, uh, stars are tremendously far apart. And in fact, the usual um, units that we use to measure distance just aren't going to be enough. Kilometers and astronomical units, um, they're too, we say they're too cumbersome to use because they're just too many of them. It's like measuring uh, the distance from here to Philadelphia in, in inches. It's a ridiculously large number. You could do it, but you need a better unit. Um, by the way, you know what a kilometer is. An astronomical unit, I'll write it over here, 1 AU, we say, is a distance from the sun from, uh, from the sun to the earth from sun to earth okay and that's about 150 million kilometers so we can use that chunk of space we call that an astronomical unit but even that if we measure the distance between stars with an AU it still is going to be a very very big number so we need an even bigger distance and that distance is light year a light year now it sounds like an amount of time but it's actually a measure of distance it is the distance that light travels in one year now light travels very fast as you know it travels at 300 and um, I'm sorry 300,000 kilometers per second all right we we call that by the way in physics we call that C um, you know Einstein's famous equation e equal e equals m c squared. Well, that c actually stands for the speed of light. Um, so c is three hundred thousand kilometers per second. So very very fast. Um, and so if you give it a whole year to travel, that's a very very big distance because there's a lot of seconds in a year. So we call that a light year. It's actually a measure of distance. Um, to put it in perspective, it's 9.5 trillion kilometers, or 5.8 trillion miles. Um, so it's a very, very big distance, but it's a big chunk of distance because we need that to measure um, the distance between stars because they're very, very far apart. We use other methods as, as well, but um, the, the light year is the main unit that we use to measure stars distance apart. All right. So we look up in the nighttime sky and we see stars that are different brightnesses. Um, and I'm going to flip over real quick to Celestia right here. Here we go. There we go. There's Celestia. We have a whole bunch of stars. Um, one big star you should recognize. That one right there is our sun, of course. And uh, oops, sorry, I try to ignore that text up there that just got left on the screen um, that's our Sun and of course in the background we have this whole field of stars and you can see this guy right here looks pretty bright and these two look pretty bright and then there's some way in the background here that look kind of dim well what controls that or what determines how bright a star actually appears to us well first of all it can be their size maybe a star is just very very large and therefore it's got more surface area and give off more light um, it could be because of its temperature and it's logical to think that the hotter a star is, the brighter it will be. That certainly makes sense. Like for your um, your kitchen stove, if you see those those electric coils glowing, they're glowing bright at me. It must mean they're hot, right? Um, so that makes sense with stars, but also their distance as well. And this is kind of a tricky thing. Um, distance can determine how bright we see a star to be. Um, maybe it's really bright. Maybe it's um, not very bright, but maybe it's just very bright and far away, so it looks less bright. So distance plays a factor in there as well. Um, so this brings us to the idea of the magnitude, the magnitude of a star. That is, the magnitude of a star's brightness, or the amount of, of light, you might say, that it gives off. And there's two different ways to measure a star's magnitude. The first of which is called the apparent magnitude. Now, apparent, I'm going to write that over here, means seems like. Oops, seems, I'll say seems to be. 
Okay. That is, um, you know, if something is apparent to you, that's the way it appears to you. Now, the apparent magnitude or the apparent brightness means how bright it appears to us as viewed from Earth. Because obviously we live on Earth and we look up in the nighttime sky and we, we see something that looks like that aside from our sun. We see all these stars out here with different brightnesses. Well, maybe they are that bright. Maybe they aren't, but it could be simply a function of how far away they are from us. So stars viewed from Earth give us the apparent magnitude. That means how bright it appears to us from Earth. And as stars um, gain distance from us, that is, the further away a star is, the less bright it appears, or the less magnitude it appears to be. Um, now, magnitude is kind of weird. Um, it's not really weird, but it's it's uh, it's kind of tricky, the measuring system. Um, the brighter stars, brighter, can have negative magnitudes. And the dim stars, dimmer, can have or have plus magnitudes. Don't let that confuse you too much. It just uh, depends on the, the scale that we use or how, or the, yeah, the mathematical way of measuring stars' brightness. Um, but our sun, our sun is right in here, has a magnitude of plus five. All right, so that just gives you an idea of, of, uh, of the scale. Our, our sun is kind of average and the magnitude is, is called plus five. Um, but this is how we see them from Earth. Now, if we look up at the nighttime sky or even the daytime sky and look at all the stars and look at the sun, we would say, all right, which star is the brightest? And you say, oh, the sun. But then you think about it for a minute and you say, wait a minute, that's just because it's closest to us. Um, other stars may actually be brighter, but they're further away. So the apparent magnitude is kind of tricky. It's not really the true magnitude or true brightness of a star. The other way of measuring magnitude is called the absolute magnitude. And absolute simply means um, it's the way that it is and nobody can say anything else about it. It's, um, it's absolutely the way that it is. So it's the true brightness of a star. Intrinsic means um, having to do with, with itself. Um, but you, you can say it's the true brightness of a star. So maybe a star appears dim, but since it's far away, um, it appears dim, but it's actually bright. Well, if we were to take all the stars, so we have like a big star right here. So say here, we're, we're here on Earth. I'll, I'll turn it blue here. So we're here on Earth. Okay. And we have this star, we have this star, we have this star, this guy, this guy, and this guy right here. If we line them all up at a standard distance from Earth, then we could see, we could compare them all fairly because they're all the same distance. And we could see which has the greatest magnitude or the greatest brightness. It's kind of like we pretended all the stars were 32.6 light years away from us um, and line them all up and said, okay, which is the brightest? We can't actually do that because all the stars are different distances from us, but it's like pretending they're that distance from us. And in fact, there's many stars um, in our neighborhood right here. If I zoom out here, I zoom way out, okay, you can see the other stars around us start to move. Some of those stars are actually 36 some light years away from us. All right, I'm going back home here to our star and here we are. So if we pretended all stars were the same distance away from us and compared their brightness, that would give us the absolute magnitude. And again, we can measure with negative numbers. This is brightest and positive numbers. Um, our st sun happens to be kind of a um, an average to dim star compared to some other ones there. So that is magnitude. That's the absolute magnitude. The apparent magnitude is just simply how it appears to us. The absolute magnitude is, um, is how bright it actually is at a standard distance. So we have stars of different brightnesses. We also we have stars of different temperatures as well. So what constitutes a hot star? A hot star, we'll box that off in 
red right there. Well, that means that it's above 30,000 Kelvin. That's That K means Kelvin. It's just like, it's just like Celsius. It, the, the two scales have exactly the same degrees. It's not like Celsius and Fahrenheit where the degrees are, are different. You have to do math. Um, it's exactly the, the degrees are the same. It, they're just shifted a couple hundred degrees one way. Um, don't worry about that too much when you're talking about only a few hundred degrees. Um, they don't really matter when you're talking about 30,000 Kelvin. So this is a tremendously hot star. Certainly a lot hotter than you can get your um, your kitchen oven, that's for sure. And as we saw when we talked about um, electromagnetic radiation, the radiation, or that is you might say the color of light with the most energy, has the shortest wavelengths. That is... It's blue or purple. Remember we drew all the different wavelengths of light and the shortest ones were blue. The medium ones were kind of green in the middle of the light spectrum and the real long ones were red right there. Well, the highest energy ones are blue. They give off blue light and so therefore the hottest stars are going to appear blue to us. Let me show you one real quick. I'll go back to Celestia again. Uh, Rigel is a good example, and you'll, you'll become familiar with that later on. Let's go to Rigel right here. This is in our neighborhood. This star is very hot, and if we were to see it at a standard distance, it would actually appear blue, kind of like it appears right there. All right, compare that to our sun, which looks kind of yellowish. So different colors indicate different temperatures. The hottest stars are blue. The coolest stars, believe it or not, in fact, you know, I'm going to erase this here because that's not accurate. I should box that off with blue because that is actually is the hottest color. Um, the cool stars are actually going to be red. Now, you, we tend to equate the color red with hot things, but when you're looking at the light that stars give off, red is actually the coolest color because we can see right here. Red has the longest wavelength. It has the least amount of energy. So stars with less than 3,000 Kelvin, that's kind of like saying 3,000 degrees Celsius. That's still very hot. Um, but I think in some conditions, there we've actually made fire suits where you can... Uh, survive a couple thousand degrees um, Celsius. So that's that's not uncommon to have this kind of heat in, in some places on Earth. Um, but some stars are actually that that temperature. So we have longer wavelength light, less, we've got lower energy right here coming out of that, which means the star is less hot. And so therefore it appears red. I'll circle that right there. It appears red. Now a great example of a red star is one I think I might have mentioned to you. Oops. No, that's our sun. Whoa, we're just, we're inside the sun now. Okay. Let's back out here a little bit. B E T E L. There we go. This is Betelgeuse. And if you see this in the nighttime sky, it actually appears kind of reddish pink, sort of. It looks this color. Now, it's not red like fire engine red, but you get the idea. It's reddish. It's a special kind of star. We call it a, uh, a red supergiant. And if you look at this in the nighttime sky, you'll actually see it'll have this color. But it's also one of the coolest stars out there. It's only in a couple thousand degrees Celsius, a couple thousand degrees Kelvin. So that is a red star, the coolest kind of star. Well... Right in the middle of, you might say, the color spectrum is green and yellow. Red is on one end, blue is on the other end, and, um, and so yellow is right in the middle. Stars like our sun are kind of average hotness, average brightness. By the way, you're hearing my dog coughing in the background. Will you guys stop, please? Thank you. Um, between five and six thousand degrees Kelvin, okay, five and six thousand degrees Celsius. You can you can think of it like that, and they appear yellow. So, or you could possibly say even green, 
Now our sun doesn't really appear green. It appears mostly yellow to us, but it does give out a lot of green wavelengths because green and yellow are kind of in the, in the middle of the spectrum. Middle of the temperature, middle of the color spectrum, that characterizes our sun right there. And so that's why, once again, if we look at Celestia, oop, that's still Betelgeuse. Let's go back to our sun right there, and sure enough, there she is, yellow. Okay. So that's the three different temperatures of stars. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a chart of stars' temperatures versus their brightness. And this is going to be a special kind of chart that we call the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. H-E-R-T-Z-P-R-U-N-G Russell or U-S-S-E-L-L -L diagram oops diagram and what it does is we plot temperature it's not a very good horizontal line we plot temperature versus brightness so it's like a graph uh, so if I can write sideways here, B R I G H T, etc. Now you might think that if we plot temperature versus brightness, you might say the hotter it is, the brighter it will get. And you'd be partly right, but there are some stars that don't really obey that rule. So um, in just a minute, or well, or whenever you get it, um, shortly you should be receiving a. Hertzsprung Russell diagram um, empty graph. And in the next video, I'll go through with you on how we actually plot the stars on there and what kind of groupings the stars make. But for now, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.